fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. government troops were sent to the frontier in the early days of the western United States, it was the masked rider of the plains who taught them how to control the Indians. Without his knowledge of the country, his strength and daring, the army might never have brought peace and security to the new territory. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the fort! The colonel sent for us! It was high noon, and an Indian, his headband bearing the eagle's crest that marked the chieftain, broke from the woods at a trot and continued across a broad clearing. As he held to his steady pace, he failed to observe the shadow cast by a great bird that hovered high overhead. Its small eyes were bright and cruel, its beak curved like that of a vulture, its talons strong and sharp. Beneath its talons, two long, needle-thin spikes glinted in the sun. Sighting the red man below, the bird gave a hoarse cry. Manita! Flapped its broad wings once, then swooped toward its victim with the speed of a falling stone. Presently, from far away, there came the faint sound of a horn. The great bird lifted its head, took a few short steps, then left the ground to circle slowly into the air. The command of the horn was repeated. And the bird, straightening its course, grew small in the distance until at last it had completely disappeared from sight. A month later... Ahead there, stranger. He said the parish is through. He's waiting for you. Thanks. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. That must be his quarters, Tonto. Uh-huh. Oh, Silver. Oh, Scout. <laughs> Stay with the horses, Kimosabe. If you're needed, I'll call you. Uh-huh. Come in. Colonel Miles? All right. I make the time. We started as soon as we received your message, Colonel. Your messenger stayed at our camp to rest his mount. He'll likely be back tomorrow. Yes, that's fine. I suppose you're wondering why I sent for you. I could guess, sir. Yes? Do you want me to speak in front of this man? Oh, yes. I nearly forgot you, Crockett. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's all right, Colonel. 
This is the man I spoke of. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Knew that as soon as I seen his mask. This is Bert Crockett. He brought me the information that persuaded me to send for you. Crockett, huh? I think I've heard of you, Bert. You've got a trading post back in the hills. That's me, stranger. Been trading with the engines for furs. Been doing real well, too. Leastwise till lately. I see. Colonel, I believe my guess is right. What is it? The Indians. Tonto and I have heard things. There's something odd going on. From the little we've been able to learn, there seems to be someone or something that's been getting them stirred up. What it is, I don't know. The Indians are too frightened to talk. And the whites I've met have no information at all. You're right. Something has gotten into those redskins, and by heavens, I mean to find out what. I want you to help me. How? I can't tell you. If you will help, I'll have to leave that up to you. I can't tell you where to begin or what to look for or what to do when you find it, whatever it is. All I can say is that trouble must be located and wiped out, or I won't answer for what happens in this territory inside the next six months. I'll do what I can, of course. Bert, what do you know about this? Colonel Miles said you had information. Well, taint much. No? What I mean is, taint much that'll help you, I'm afeard. You see, I've been trained with the engines for going on 15 years. All has got on well with them, too. Most of the engines around this part of the country, you know, have always been friendly with whites. There hasn't been an uprising since I came to this post. But here about two weeks ago, the engines quit trading with me. Not only that, but they started dodging me. Acted like I was poison. I'm telling you, stranger, maybe it don't sound like much now. But before I pulled stakes, things got real creepy. Couldn't sleep without dreaming some engine was yearning to lift off my top hair. Couldn't leave my cabin to hunt for game without feeling I was being watched. If it had been something I'd met up with before, I'd likely have known what to do. But it weren't. So I just packed and skedaddled. You see what I mean? It isn't just Bert's story. It's the fact that I've heard a dozen just like it. They all tell the same thing. As far as I can see, they point one way. To what? An uprising. I Wait. Not... When I say uprising, I'm not suggesting that some chief had decided to raise a ruckus because he's angry about something or just wants the excitement. It's bigger than that and different somehow. It's as though the redskins from one end of the territory to the other are being forced to do something against their will. As though whatever they're up to, it's fear that's moving them. It's not easy to explain, but there you have it. I can't make it any clearer. You see it exactly as I do. Yes. There's trouble in the air. And like Bert says, it's not the kind of trouble we've had to meet before. Right. Can you help? I'll promise nothing, sir. But you have my word, I'll do what's possible. You're off already? The sooner we get to the bottom of this, the better. Where will you go? To the hills. I'll report when I can. We're riding, Tonto. Where go? Hip to the Indian country. Come on, Silver. Get him out. Go. Silver, away! Three days of hard riding found the Lone Ranger and his faithful companion deep in the hills. The country was wild and barren, broken by canyons and cliffs, imperfectly covered with occasional stands of stunted firs and pines. Late in the afternoon of the third day, the masked man reined his great stallion to a slow walk, and Tonto followed suit. Should we make camp soon, Tonto, or go on? Maybe, maybe make camp, huh? If we continued, how long would it take us to reach Thundercloud's village? It takes uh, seven hours. We couldn't get there much before midnight, huh? That right. I wonder. Now I think we'd better go on, Kimasabi. The horses had a good rest at noon. I want to see Thundercloud as soon as possible. Uh uh-huh. We... Wait. Who's over? Who's gone? See that patch of trees to the right? Uh uh-huh. Two horsemen just rode in there. I don't know whether they saw us or not. I didn't see them until I caught the movement of their horses. Them engine? I don't know. Unless they stay under cover, we'll see them again in a moment. They'll likely come out just above that spur of rock. There, feller. That's one of them. That big wolf. Big wolf? He's one of Thunderclouds Indians. Uh, they split up. Look, the other riders turn north. Tonto, that's a white man. Uh, that's a good-looking bay he's riding. Uh, well, big wolf's the man I want. Call to him, Tonto. He'll hear you. If he knows anything, it'll save us a trip to the village. Uh, Tai! Tai, Kimosabe! He heard you. You wait him. He heard you, Tonto, but he's breaking into a gallop. That's strange. If we could recognize him, he surely could recognize us. Uh, 
Looked to me exactly as though he didn't want to stop. There him go. Him head him up valley. Now, though, there's been too much of this. Do you realize Big Wolf's the first Indian we've seen since we entered the hills? Uh, they've been staying out of sight because I'm a white man. Just like they've been dodging other whites. What do? I'm going after Big Wolf. Uh, he knows I'm a friend of Thundercloud. And he's going to talk to me whether he chooses to or not. Come along, Tonto. Get him off the car. Let's go, Silver. Come on, Silver boy. We you get him? Come on, Silver. <laughs> Urging Silver to his utmost speed, the masked man reached the patch of trees through which Big Wolf had passed, burst into the clear on the farther side, and raced on up the valley where Big Wolf was still in plain sight. The Indian, hearing the pound of hooves behind him, beat at his pony with a lash, but the willing animal was no match for the great horse Silver. For ten minutes, the masked man rapidly closed in. Then he reached out a hand and grasped the Indian's rope bridle. Oh, there! Oh, rain in, Big Wolf! Oh, Silver! Oh, Silver! Oh, there! Oh! Big Wolf! What is it? Why did you try to escape from me? You knew who I was, didn't you? Don't pretend you can't understand me, Big Wolf. We've met too many times before. You speak the white man's tongue as well as Tonto. You go away. Here's Tonto now. Better him go too. Whoa, Tonto. Whoa, fella. Whoa, whoa. He refuses to explain himself, Kimasabi. Mm -hmm. Big Wolf, what matter? Better you let Big Wolf go. Listen to me. You've known me for many years. You know that except for Tonto, I have no closer friend among your people than your chief Thundercloud. All the people of your tribe have been my friends. You give me help when I ask for it. You've learned that I can be trusted. Now prove that you trust me. What's happening in the hills, Big Wolf? What's behind it and what does it mean? Me talk, me die. What do you mean? Up there, up near Cloud, great medicine man live. Yes? Him, white medicine man, but him hate all pale face. Him say red man stay away from pale face. Red man not do it, him say. Red man die. Go on. Great bird kill red man. It come from sky, strike like eagle. It make big thunder. It's spirit brave warrior long time dead it. Big Wolf, what's the matter? Me not say more. Wait, let me get him. No, let him go, Tonto. He said all he's going to. We won't get any more from him. Mm. A white medicine man and a great bird that strikes from the sky. Kimasabe, we'll see what Thundercloud can add to that. Find what Big Wolf meant and our work's half done. Thundercloud's village had been, however, the masked man found evidence of a hasty departure. It was not until the next day that he and Tonto located the site of the new village. And when they did, the masked man, uncertain of his welcome, remained outside while Tonto entered alone. While he waited, he noticed signs of excitement in the village. And when at last Tonto returned... Tonto, what did Thundercloud say? What did you find out? Big wolf. Him dead. Big wolf? Uh... We talked to him just yesterday. That right. And he told us... Tonto, I wonder if he died because he talked. Maybe. Where was he found? Not far. Me show you. Lead the way. I'll get him up, Scott. I'll silver away! The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. While Tonto led the way to the place where the body of Big Wolf had been found, he repeated the information he had gathered from Chief Thundercloud. Thundercloud not see him, white medicine man. No. Him live way up mountain near Cloud. Red man afraid go there. Whoever he is, he certainly got the Indians in this district frightened. Thundercloud told you not to bring me to the village, huh? That's right. In other words, he doesn't want a white man seen there. Well, we've been good friends, Tonto. My presence would make it dangerous for him. I'll stay away. Uh, what else did he tell you? Him tell about bird, too. The mysterious bird Big Wolf mentioned that strikes from the sky? Uh, he believes in it? Uh, did he say the bird was a spirit of a warrior who had died? That the spirit does what the medicine man tells him to do? Uh, exactly what Big Wolf claimed. Uh, what I can't understand is this. Perhaps there is a medicine man hidden somewhere high in the mountains. Perhaps even he's white. Such things have happened before. But no one has seen the fellow. How did the Indians learn of him? Old man tell him. An old man? Ah. Uh, him, white man. Him tell him Indians. Him, only feller see medicine man. Then someone has seen him. Ah. Uh, Who is this old man? Does he claim to be sort of a go-between for the medicine man with the Indians? Or is this just a story he's been telling? Him, friend medicine man. Medicine man give him, him order... Him give him order, red man. And those who objected to this have died. Bird kill him. I don't believe that story about a bird that can kill a man. It's trickery of some sort. This fellow, whoever he is, is using it to play on the Indian superstitions. Uh, their place. Where Big Wolf was found? Uh, oh, Silver. Oh, oh Scott. <laughs> we look for signs, Tonto. The braves who carried Big Wolf away haven't destroyed it all. Uh. We... Silver, old fellow, what's the matter? Shadow scare him. A shadow? Oh, I see what it was. Look there, Tonto. An eagle. A big fellow. Silver must have seen him from the corner of his eye and been startled. Uh, there he goes, heading for that cliff. Hear him horn? Hunters, probably. Well, let's look around and see what we can find. careful examination of the ground only added to the mystery. No hoof prints were found except those made by the ponies that Thundercloud's braves had been riding. Casting about in ever-widening circles, they still failed to discover a trace of the murder. At length, the masked man said, This is getting us nowhere, Tonto. It's heap strange. You're sure Big Wolf wasn't killed by a bullet? With a rifle, he could have been shot from a distance. Him stabbed. Stabbed, huh? Him got him two holes in back. Stabbed twice. Ah. Uh. Now, though, Big Wolf may have been marked for death long before we met him. Uh -huh. But if he wasn't, he was killed because he was seen talking to me. And only one man could have known that. Who that? The white man he was with when we first saw him. Remember? When Big Wolf headed up the valley, the other rode north. That right. He could have circled back to keep an eye on us. He couldn't have got close enough to hear what was said. But watching us together, he might have thought we learned more from Big Wolf than we did. Yeah. Tonto, we're picking up that fellow's trail. It's our only lead. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Come on, old fellow. Before nightfall, they found the trail of Big Wolf's companion. It circled as the Lone Ranger had suspected, then veered to the north again and ascended by way of rugged trail that bordered a cliff. The masked man and Tonto followed it till nightfall, then resumed their journey early the next morning. At noon... They'd reached a height where clouds fogged the trail. The canyon to their left had deepened until its bottom was lost in shadows. Suddenly, a distant shout greeted them. Hey there! Help! Help! Hey, below there! Hear that? Uh, Someone in trouble. Help! Help! Where are you? Up the trail here! Keep it coming! Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Not too fast, Hunter. This trail's treacherous. A loose stone and you'd find yourself over the side. Uh... Isn't that a horse up ahead? It... Tonto, that's the bay that fellow was riding. That is all right. This fellow who called is the man we've been hunting. Uh. Well, give me a hand here. What's the trouble? Got my foot caught. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh yeah. How'd this happen? Uh, just dumb foolishness, Saul. Dropped the canister back in, climbed down to get it. Shouldn't know better than walk here without wa watching my step. Foot slipped into this here crack and... Now I can't get out. Let's have a look. I tried getting my foot out by unfastening the boot, but that won't work either. Well, this is a bad place. 
Get me your hand axe, Tyler. Uh -huh. I'll see if I can't chip the rock away a bit. And that should do it. Mask, eh? Yes. <laughs> well, I ain't going to ask you no questions that wouldn't be welcome. I'm too doggone glad you come along. Gosh, mister, what would have happened to me if you hadn't? You'd probably have found a way out of this. I don't know. I was trying to blame hard before you showed up. Here, thanks. Well, thanks. This piece here seems to be doing it. Uh, think you can get it? Just a moment. Ah. Now try. No, oh, doggone. Ankle feels like it might have been sprained. Coming? Uh-huh. Think so. Wait now. Uh, there. There she is. Good. Whew. Mister, you don't know how grateful I am to you. I could have died here. I'm glad we were able to help. Maybe so. But you ain't no ways near as glad as I am, I can tell you. Uh, look here. What can I do for you? I'd like to show you I'm appreciating this. That isn't necessary. No, sirree. When a gent does something for me, I do something for him. Now, name it. I don't want anything. I got it. Wait. Just wait till I get my saddlebags. I I got just the very thing. But I said I didn't want any. Here it is. Here. It ain't much, but you won't mind that, I reckon. It'll serve to show you I ain't ungrateful. And what is it? Huh? Don't you recognize wampum when you see it? <laughs> Shucks, I strung this stuff together myself. Give it the engine. Seems to please them. Paint it bright like this, and it looks real handsome. Oh, go on, take it. Here, I'll throw it around that bandana you use. Uh, uh, <laughs> now then, ain't that fancy? I'd rather not take it. Stranger, you can't refuse. It's just a token. Don't cost me nothing. And I'd be plumb hurt if you turned me down. So there. Very well. Into the saddle, Tato. We're riding on. Mounting, the Lone Ranger and Tonto proceeded up the trail. They'd gone scarcely a hundred yards when behind them, they heard the sound of the horn they'd heard before. There, same horn. The old fellow we just met must have blown it. it must have been him we'd heard earlier. What it for? It could be a signal. Uh-huh. You noticed I didn't let him know he'd been on his trail. Why you do that? He asked the description of the old fellow they say works with this mysterious medicine man. Uh. If he is the same fellow, he had reason for following this trail. It may lead to the man we're after. It wouldn't have helped us any to take this fellow prisoner. Uh. I had another reason for saying nothing. What that? His foot wasn't really caught. He only pretended that it was. He was pushing with his foot, not pulling. Me not see that. If I'd let him know I saw through his trick, it would have cost me the chance to learn his motive. Maybe it was simply he knew we'd catch up to him and wanted to play innocent. And when we'd pass, signal the medicine man we were coming. As I said, that horn could have been a signal. Maybe that it. Well, if it is, we are forewarned at any rate. We should be able to handle whatever's ahead of us. We'll ride as high as we can. Look. Let... What? There's another eagle. Circling for height. What's that? Huh? See where the sun hits the eagle's claws? Who, oh, Silver? Oh. Out. Can't be part of his claws. Too long for that. The way it reflects the sun, it could be steel. Uh, he could be the same bird we saw before. He's at least as powerful. I, look there. He stopped. Looks like he's just hanging in the air. He... Tonto. What matter? The horn. The bird that strikes from the air. Those stab wounds on Big Wolf. Those things that look like metal on his claws. Back, Tonto, back. I saw them out of the cave where we left that old fellow behind. Now, don't argue. Back, Silver. Quickly, old boy. Come on, If you value your life, Tonto, get to the cave before that eagle strikes. Here he comes. Come on, Silver. Come on. The masked man and Tonto had scarcely turned to retrace their path when the great eagle hovering overhead swooped suddenly and plunged toward them with the speed of light. It cut the air like an arrow, released from a taut bow aimed true to its target. The old man had come into view again, but the cave was still some distance away when the lone ranger realized it could not be reached in time. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, oh Scott. Oh, fella. Oh. Stand clear, Tonto. Back. Hold him still, Scott. Here come birds. <laughs> you hit him. Look there at his claws. Steel spikes fixed to them. Uh. If he had struck, one of us would have been dead. He'd have driven those spikes into the hilt. That's how Big Wolf died. Right. You killed him! You killed him! Blast you! You killed him! 
Drop that gun. I'll kill you myself. I'll kill them both. No, you don't. I do. Well, up with your hands. Walk over here. All right. Shoot. Go ahead. You're going back to the fort as my prisoner. Like blazes, I am. Shut him. He's out of his head. He's running for the edge of the cliff. Get that man. Me get him. You're too late. Both of you. Stay back. I'm choosing my own way up. <laughs> You see now why he gave me that painted string of wampum, Tonto? It pointed me out to the eagle. He trained his eagle to strike at that lure. That's how he got rid of the others who opposed him. Whoever he wanted out of the way, he'd give them that brightly painted wampum. Release the eagle later and leave the rest to it. How him do that? It couldn't have been easy, Kimasabi, but you can see for yourself it's possible. In fact, others have done it before him. Eagles have been trained to kill wolves and deer. Men were just a more difficult quarry. Ah. And with those sharp metal spikes fixed to its talons and driven into a man by the full force of its plunge, any man not expecting the attack could be killed. Who that come? I... Thought it was Colonel Miles. Oh, 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 oh. Thank heavens you're both alive. Colonel, how did you get here? Why did you follow us? To warn you. Warn us? If the report I've had is correct, I know the man you're hunting. He's an old prospector who disappeared more than a year ago. He owns an eagle that he's trained and... Is that the eagle you mean? It must be, but how... He on... just attacked us. The man you speak of is beyond your reach, sir. You'll find him at the bottom of the cliff. I don't understand. When he saw the game was up, he destroyed himself. Perhaps it was for the best. I see. He'd been playing a double role, that of a powerful white medicine man and the messenger who carried his wishes to the Indians. Sooner or later, if he hadn't died, he would have controlled every Indian in the territory. He was wanted for a murder at the time he disappeared. So this is where the old fellow hid out. And there's the horn he used to call the eagle back after he'd struck, Colonel. Go in that cave beyond, and I think you'll find he kept it there. The man must have been mad. Completely. But he preferred taking his own life to facing a trial and the imprisonment he must have known would follow. He understood Indians, however. He did. He caught their imaginations, played on their fear, appealed to their love of the supernatural. And if you hadn't intervened, might have driven every white from the territory. Come, Tonto. Yep. Uh, Washington will hear of this, Lone Ranger. Adios, Shilmar. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.